standard C3 integrals. When we integrate x to the power of n, we get x to the power of n plus 1, so you increase the power by 1 and you divide by the new power plus some constant of integration. And if x to the power of n was multiplied by some constant, uh, let's say some constant k there, then that constant just multiplies here. And that constant k that you're multiplying by, you can write it here or here, and it doesn't change anything. So, for instance, let's say if we're integrating 2 x to the power of 5 dx, so ignoring that 2, that constant that you're multiplying by there, you get x to the power of 6, because you're adding 1 to the power there, divide by the new power, plus the constant of integration, c, and that 2 there will multiply right here. And then you can cancel this down. And because we're multiplying by 2 here, I could remove that 2 from there and write it on the outside. Uh, that doesn't change anything, you still get the same answer. OK, the first standard integral for C3 comes from this. What you have here is a linear function raised to a power. Okay, so this is a linear function inside the brackets raised to a power. So when you integrate, you have your linear function as it is here inside the brackets. Increase the power by 1, so to the power of n plus 1, and then we know we're going to divide by this new power here, but you also divide by the coefficient of the x term, which is a, plus some constant of integration. Now this rule is only true for values of n, but not including, so n cannot be equal to minus 1. So, why would it not hold when n is equal to minus 1? Well, let's have a look at the AS version here. He had x to the power of n, and the same thing's true with this formula. n cannot be equal to minus 1. Okay, so let's see if I'm integrating x to the power of, and I'm going to put in minus 1 now. So then you have x to the power of, and you know that you increase the power by 1. So minus 1 plus 1 gives you 0, and then you divide by the new power plus the constant of integration. Anything to the power of 0 is 1, so you've got 1 divided by 0 here. 1 divided by 0 is undefined. So, this doesn't work. There is a method of integrating functions of the form, some linear function to the power of minus 1, and we'll have a look at that later in this video. So, coming back to this standard formula, which you need to memorize, uh, if you were integrating let's say 2x plus 3 to the power of minus 1, you would not use this formula because the power n is minus 1. And this formula works for values of n which are not equal to minus 1. You see, an alternative way of writing the same thing here would be like this. Integrate 1 over 2x 
plus 3 dx. Again, this is exactly the same as this, and the power there is minus 1, so you cannot use this formula for these types of questions. Yeah, these types of questions will give you logs once you've integrated. There's a, a, a formula specifically for n equals minus 1, but not this formula. So let's integrate 5x minus 3 to the power of, let's say, minus 2 dx. So what does this give us? Well, we've got the function inside the brackets, the linear function, which is 5x minus 3. We're going to increase the power by 1. It was minus 2, and minus 2 is fine because the condition was that the power here at this stage cannot be minus 1. Okay, so increasing that by 1 gives us this, and then we're going to divide by the new power and the coefficient of x and the constant of integration. Okay, another example integrating 1 minus 3x to the power of 4. Okay, so we have a linear function inside the brackets raised to a power. So what's inside the brackets first? Increase the power by 1 and then divide by the new power and we're also dividing by the coefficient of x. The coefficient of x is minus 3. Make sure you include the sign there, minus 3, plus a constant of integration. Again, simplifying minus 1 over 15, 1 minus 3x to the power of 5, plus a constant of integration. Okay, now we move on to integrating exponentials. So if we integrate e to the power of some linear function, okay, so e to the power of a linear function, we get e to the power of ax plus b, the linear function, and then you divide by the coefficient of x plus the constant of integration. This is a standard formula which you need to memorize. Okay, so if we want to integrate e to the power of 2x minus 5, then that will give us e to the power of 2x minus 5 again. But we need to divide by the coefficient of x, which is 2, plus a constant of integration. If we're integrating e to the power of 1 minus 4x. So we've got e to the power of 1 minus 4x again, dividing by the coefficient of x, which is minus 4, plus the constant of integration. If we're integrating 3 times e to the power of 5 plus 4x, so we've got e to the power of 5 plus 4x again, and we're dividing by the coefficient of x, which is 4. We were multiplying by 3 here, so we multiply by 3 here, plus the constant of integration. Integrating e to the power of 3x, and 3x is a linear function, so we've got e to the power of 3x again, dividing by the coefficient of x, which is 3 plus the constant of integration. Integrating e to the power of 2x plus 1. But let's say this has been multiplied by a constant, just as we had here. But the constant I'm going to use is e. 
it is just a number, it's just a constant. So you've got e to the power of 2x plus 1 divided by the coefficient of x, which is 2, plus the constant of integration there. We were multiplying by e here, so I'm going to multiply by e here. And if you want to simplify this, this is e to the power of 1 times e to the power of 2x plus 1. Because you're multiplying them with the standard rules of indices, you can add the powers together. So if you do 1 plus the 2x plus 1, you get 2x plus 2 divided by 2 plus the constant of integration. Integration of 1 over a linear function. So we're trying to do this. 1 over any linear function of x like this. So what will that give us? Another way of saying exactly the same thing is integrate ax plus b to the power of minus 1. And as you've seen previously in this video, when you have a power of minus 1, the formula here does not work. This formula, linear function raised to a power, was for values of n not including minus 1. Now this is what you get after integrating. So, as you can see, you get a natural log. Yeah, that's log to the base e. This formula only holds when you have a linear function of x in the denominator, and the numerator is just some constant. The numerator cannot be a function of x. So any constant in the numerator is fine. And this is the standard result. Now this looks slightly different if you have limits of integration here, in which case you get this. And the key difference between the two formulae is when you have limits, use the modulus function here. This avoids having the log of some negative number. As you know, the modulus function there will give you something positive here rather than something negative. You can't work out logs of negative numbers. So using this standard formula to integrate 1 over 3x plus 5, so we have uh, our log 3x plus 5, and as you can see, you're dividing by the coefficient of x, which is 3, plus some constant of integration. Now this question may have been given to you in this form. To the power of minus 1, and you would still get the same answer here, because these are exactly the same. If we were multiplying by something in the numerator here, let's say instead of 1, that was 10, like this. So if you're multiplying by 10 there, you're multiplying by 10 here, then the answer there, you just multiply by 10, so you end up with this. Okay, integrating this, and as you can see, you have a linear function in the brackets raised to the power of minus 1 which means we're going to get logs. So we've got 4 minus x like log 4 minus x there. You, you've got um, uh, divide by the coefficient of x. So what's the coefficient of x? Well, it's minus 1. So we need to divide by minus 1. Um, there's a constant of integration, and we're multiplying by 3 there, so the 3 just multiplies like this. And you can easily simplify this. 3 divided by minus 1 just gives you minus 3. So minus 3 lin 4 minus x plus c.